Good morning. Today we are talking about sorrel. And we're talking about several different kinds of sorrel. One of which I grow in my garden, another of which I will be starting this year, and three other types that are either wild or I've tried growing in the past and have uh, decided that I'm not growing anymore. And I'll tell you why I'm not growing uh, one of those types uh, anymore. First off though, we're gonna start with the wild types. And there, there are two common wild types in the United States, at least especially in my region in New England. One of those is known as wood sorrel. Now, it is not a true sorrel. It's kind of a different, uh, different family altogether. Um, but it looks an awful lot like a clover. It doesn't fix nitrogen like a clover, so it doesn't have that benefit, but it tastes lemony. It'll grow in your yard. Uh, you quite often will find it as a weed. It has these yellow flowers that don't look at all like the clover flowers. So you can distinguish it once it goes to flower. You can also tell because the leaves themselves don't have that uh, kind of almost like a, a pointed pattern of white uh, in the middle of the green. It is more common in a, uh, in a clover. So that is wood sorrel, and you can snack on that. You're never going to harvest enough to make a recipe out of it. It is edible. Um, it probably contains oxalic acid, uh, similarly to the other unrelated sorrels that I'm going to talk about. But I'd be surprised if you could ever collect enough of that to do more than have a sprig or two uh, in your salad. You probably wouldn't want to eat it in quantity anyway, it's just not as tender as the other sorrels I'm gonna talk about. But it is out there as something you could collect and forage and eat some of. I don't know if there are dangers about eating it in quantity, so you might wanna look that up before you go and do so, but you can comfortably snack on that uh, if it's growing in your yard. The second one is, um, is called sheep sorrel, and that actually is a sorrel, it's related to the sorrels, and it has that characteristic arrowhead shape leaf that you'll find on sorrels. So that grows wild. It, uh, it grows all over the place in, in certain regions. We can find it here uh, where I am in New England, and you may be able to find it where you are. And once again, that can be foraged, and you may be able to find enough uh, of the, the sheep sorrel to make something out of. I don't know for certain, but I imagine it has the same warnings that I'm gonna tell you about with the other types of sorrel. So moving on to the non-wild, non-foraged types. And this breaks down into three different types, two of which I've grown. There is the red-veined sorrel, the sort of common sorrel, what you might call garden so sorrel, garden variety sorrel, uh, and there is French sorrel. So red-veined sorrel is the first one that I decided to grow because it's beautiful. And you sometimes find it in like spring mixes, uh, just like as a, as a microgreen. Uh, and it's, it makes it, it a tasty addition to uh, a spring salad. But unless you get the leaves when they're very small, they become very tough. And it was really disappointing for me because it's such a beautiful plant. The, the red vein sorrel that I had hoped that I could, you know, have this in my garden as both the kind of an ornamental and as something that would be usable for food. And I just found that it wasn't really that useful for food. So I have abandoned red vein sorrel at this point. Uh, it probably is still growing where I had planted it originally. I will not be planting it again in my yard. Um, second variety, and this is a kind that I have right now, is the common sorrel, the garden sorrel. And that is probably the largest variety. And the leaves are almost like a spinach in texture, and they have uh, oxalic acid in them, quite a, quite a bit of oxalic acid in them, as a matter of fact. And this oxalic acid can be dangerous. You'd be hard pressed to eat enough to poison yourself, but you have to be careful because it can cause kidney stones. There is, a way that people say you can you can uh, uh, help to prevent this, and that is by eating your sorrel or your sorrel soup, which is commonly what people make sorrel into, with creme fraiche or lots of um, sour cream. Apparently, this is at least this is more rumor than 
you know, I don't have facts about this, but they say that if you eat it with enough uh, cream or sour cream, that helps to um, neutralize the oxalic acid, which uh, will then pass through your system safely, rather than potentially giving you kidney stones. Um, or if you ate too much of it, it is possible to poison yourself with oxalic acid. So you really do want to be cautious about that. I once, uh, when I was going through a vegan phase, decided I was going to design and you know create a, a uh, vegan sorrel soup, which I made with the garden sorrel. And, and after I made it, it was absolutely delicious. I made it with, um, uh, with ground up nuts, cashews for, uh, instead of, uh, the cream. And I, I couldn't understand why nobody was making vegan sorrel soup, right? Cause it was absolutely delicious. And then I went on to read a little further about it and found out that what I was probably doing, uh, was potentially poisoning myself if I ate enough of this. So you shouldn't be eating vegan sorrel soup. That's a bad idea. Uh, you need to have sour cream, you need to have creme fraiche, you need to have some sort of very fatty milk-based product, supposedly, this is what I understand, to help neutralize that oxalic acid. And that's why you're not going to find a vegan sorrel soup recipe out there, because people just, uh, many people know about this. I didn't at the time, so there you go. I survived. I ate a lot of that sorrel soup and I survived. So that is something to to know that you're not going to accidentally uh, poison yourself by eating a little bit of this, but you don't want to overdo it. It's the same, oxalic acid is the same uh, thing that is in rhubarb leaves, which is why you don't want to eat rhubarb leaves, because you can have too much oxal oxalic acid. It's just not good for you. So the final kind of sorrel we're going to talk about is French sorrel, and this has smaller leaves than common sorrel, and it also has a less uh, it, has, it doesn't have as strong a flavor as, as common sorrel. Now, honestly, I really love that lemony flavor, but knowing that that's caused by oxalic acid, I'm willing to uh, dial it back a little bit. And so I'm going to start growing French sorrel and preparing sorrel soup in sort of the traditional way that is prepared in France, which means lots of fat. And so long as I'm not eating carbohydrates, I think it's okay for me to, to overdo it a little bit on the, on the fat side of things. So that's what I'm uh, looking to prepare at some point, hopefully either this summer or uh, next year when it's really established itself. One of the cool things about both common sorrel and French sorrel, and also about the red vein sorrel, actually all of these plants are uh, perennials. So this is another perennial edible that you can add to your garden and that will keep coming back year after year. But like I say, you do need to eat it carefully. You don't want to go overboard with something that's got that much oxalic acid in it. So you can mix it in with your salad greens a little bit, but not mm, eating salads of pure sorrel. That would be a bad idea. But like so many things, eating a variety of foods you will probably be just fine. Really appreciate you dropping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me the thumbs up, drop some comments below. Let me know what you think of sorrel. What's your favorite kind? Uh, what do you do with your sorrel? Do you have other ideas of things to do with it other than just French sorrel soup? Also, please drop by the foodforestgardenclub.org website and uh, check it out and consider joining the Garden Club. We are having an awesome time over there. And so look forward to seeing you there. All right, have yourself a great day.